This episode is sponsored by Exactuals, perfecting insurance payments and the data driving them. So yeah, my, my background, it's, you say interesting, I, I, I'm, I'm a recovering actuary, so I'm not sure that's, that's interesting to everybody. Uh, well, yeah. The, yeah, no, there are a few uh, words in my vocabulary that great, interesting that I try to afford and <laughs> use others. So I'm sorry for using interesting and fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. Th- thank please you. Please continue. Uh, yeah, so the, it's funny because we just launched in the insurance uh, agents and brokerage space. So all of my conversations start off with like, I'm sorry that I'm an actuary because agents and brokers do not like actuaries like definitively. Uh, but they, you know, it's, it's the, it's the battle, right? Like the agent is talking to the underwriter and the underwriter says like, Oh, the actuary, he, he's the one who increased the rates. And so the agent is constantly just like, you know, annoyed with this third party actuary who he thinks is just glued to a chair and a calculator in the back room, which is somewhat true, but you know, may, maybe not entirely. And now, now I've incurred the hate of all the other actuaries. So. <laughs> what is the product that you launched for them? Yeah, so what we did, what we did with Coterie, and back, backing up a little bit, uh, what we did at Coterie was we wanted to do something fairly different for the small commercial space, and the small commercial space has been heavily neglected, and it, it's because like the big carriers, they just copied and pasted the middle market solution to small commercial. Basically, they didn't really see much of a point in changing the underlying process because why are they going to invest a lot of money into something that's a fairly small part of their business, right? These these policies that come through are between, you know, seven hundred fifty and five thousand dollars. Like, they're not going to make much return if they put a lot of manpower behind it. And so, what you have is you have an agent or broker going through the exact same process for a fifty thousand dollar insurance policy as they are for a five thousand dollar insurance policy, which is back and forth with underwriting, all that kind of nonsense. And what we did was we said, well, we've we've already built something. That works fairly well for small commercial, uh, for small commercial property and casualty with regard to if just making this whole risk transfer process really efficient. Let's build a product for the independent agents and brokers such that they can utilize what we're doing. And what we really like about it is we can essentially go and get all the data that we need to ensure that the policy is classified right, that you know the sprinkler system is there, that the uh, that it's away from the fire hydrant or there's coastal risk, blah, blah, all those things. And the agent can actually focus on relationships and coverage recommendations, right? Stuff that they care about, not necessarily on data entry. And what we did was we, we built a, a dashboard for that. We can also integrate into agency management systems and whatnot, which we're also working on. Um, and we've, we've launched some actually in the last couple of weeks. And uh, we're getting this out into the hands of agents and brokers. And right now, we're getting a really stellar uh, review really great feedback from the agents and brokers who we've launched with. Uh, we've got you know, several partnerships that we've we've already announced. Several more in the works. Uh, so you know, continue to look at LinkedIn and see the various various things that we put out there in terms of launch. But we're we're really excited about it. I really like your uh, LinkedIn post about all the new people who joined the, uh, the team. It's like, hey, welcome, congratulations to XYZ that joined us. Um, you know, backing up a little bit, can you give a quick description of what is Coterie? What do you guys do? Because there are people who may less familiar with you. Yeah, absolutely. So what we do, we're, a lot of people are confused. Like, are, are we a digital agency? Are we more of an MGA, MGU model? Um, and we, we're definitely more on the MGA, MGU side. We think of ourselves as like the manufacturer of insurance, right? Like, there's, there's digital agencies, uh, the Breezes, the uh, Milo, Layer, stuff like that. And then there's you know, the carriers on the back end who essentially are the manufacturers of the insurance product. We're more like a carrier. We are more focused on the manufacturing of the insurance product, building the stuff in-house so that we can enable digital agencies, traditional agencies, and even uh, any of our partners to focus on helping out these small commercial risks. And that's what we specialize on. We specialize on small commercial property and casualty. So business owners, general liability, professional liability, those are the types of risks we absolutely love. And and we we are big about just making it efficient, not only for the insured, 
but also for the partner. So like our API docs and everything makes it extremely easy to integrate with. So basically you're creating a new layer between the carriers to the MGAs. Are, are you a carrier or how are you defined by the, by the states? We act like a carrier. So we have, uh, we have reinsurers and carriers on the back end who are actually taking the risk. They give us the authority to file the products, to code the products on our end. So we're not, we're not connected to anyone else's insurance product from an API. So you're, standpoint. A, binding you're a binding authority. Yep, that's exactly right. So we, we set the rates, we, we bind the products, we issue the policies, we handle the claims, we have a oh. TPA who handles the claims, but all okay. of that uh, happens within Coterie. Gotcha. So that makes, you know, working with Brisa, Lair, Milo much easier because, you know, when you, you go into the, all the new websites and you read what they say, you're not really sure who or what the company is, especially... Yes. I would say I know a little bit, but it takes me several good minutes to, you know, to assume and come with all kinds of speculation who you are and what you actually do. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good to know. So how do you work, for example, with uh, Ben Monroe, Brisa? He was on this podcast uh, early on. How is that relationship works? Yeah, that that's that's a perfect example. Uh, so I, I had a great opportunity of being with Ben a few months ago. And I, I think he had speculation like, you know, are we competitive with Coterie? What's the deal here? Uh, we had a really great conversation and, you know, he's, he's doing the good work of hooking up with various manufacturers, right? The insurance companies who have these APIs that he can hook into. Uh, and so I was like, well, you know, we, we can probably help you out on that. Like we're really good at making this integration possible, enabling digital insurance to happen. And uh, we, we paired up, he hooked up with our API, his team's working with our team, and we're, we're probably live with that launch by now. <laughs> I assume so. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're, they're essentially going to be offering the Coterie product through Breeza uh, so people can get access to Coterie through that. And the same thing is true with, uh, you know, with Rags over at Tarmica. Uh, we launched with Tarmica about a week ago or so, uh, maybe multiple weeks ago, depending on when this comes out. Uh, but we, we had a, you know, gr really enjoy working with, uh, digital enablers, digital insurance agents who are, you know, are helping agents and brokers or just helping customers in general, get access to small commercial. So, so far from working with other insurtechs, how do you find difference between working with other insurtechs, which most of you are a little bit more mature you are series a series b mm -hmm. how is that compared to working with the carriers yeah that that's a that's a great question with with more established players you're you're going to basically get the the off the shelf solution right like they're going to say yeah here's my api docs uh, you know, figure it out go go ahead and get it um and that's that, that's what it is, right? Like they, that's how they need to operate. Uh, we're when we're a little bit different than that. Like we work with our partners, we establish Slack channels with them, we help them on the integration, testing, all that. I mean, we are a partnership focused company. That is what we do. Whether we're partnering with independent agents and brokers, whether we're partnering with digital agencies, whether we're partnering with you know, the QuickBooks Intuits of the world, like we focus on partnerships and making that a delightful experience. We. And particularly when we work with other startups, it's it's kind of a fantastic match because you know we're we're you know, we're we're a startup, um, but you get connected with people who are focused on getting this thing done and getting it done quickly so that you know they can open up revenue opportunities, all that like that's that's huge. Just having the motivation to actually get it done is extremely important. Now. When it doesn't really work is if insurance is a secondary or tertiary component of the startup, uh, then it's like, because like startups basically have enough resources to focus on one thing at a time. And if you're not on that core thing, you're, you're not going to be prioritized. So you know, certain startup companies, you can, uh, uh, it's not as ideal to integrate insurance. And that's something that we we frankly struggled with in the beginning, right? Like we would come to a partner and they're like, oh, this is really cool. We love what you're doing. We love the idea of ancillary revenue, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but they're a startup, you know, so they're really eager. But 
then they're like, yeah, we, we just got to finish this thing. And then with every start, it's like, it's this thing, then this thing, this thing. And insurance continues to be the secondary tertiary thing and never rising to the top. Um, with insure tech startups, though, they're focused on insurance. They're focused on making the space better. So it's much easier to hit that primary spot as opposed to the getting pushed down the list. Yeah. First of all, I find it hilarious that you use it. Not hilarious, but uh, the reference is hilarious that you use a secondary and tertiary. And then because uh, Douglas Adams, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the original BBC series, he used that. And then it came fourth, fifth, sixth, which I don't know how to pronounce. And it just. Corsiary? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be, I think it'd be Corsiary, Quinciary, Quinciary for six, I guess. I, I don't remember. And this is where I'm like, I'm a foreigner. I don't know English. No. <laughs> but it's still hilarious. Um, yeah, no. It's, it's very interesting to see that the small commercial received so much love and attention in the past uh, four years, right? And Next Insurance is one of the uh, flagships in terms of agency turning into an MGA, turning into a carrier in several states. Most likely they will go uh, they're on their way, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Ascodiac, which is such a small niche of disseminating the risk appetite and making mm -hmm. it easy to consume. We have the recent uh, exit um, Bold Penguin, which yeah. sort of an exchange slash building uh, dashboards and platforms. And mm -hmm. here you are stepping as sort of an, a layer of that acts as a carrier. Mm -hmm. what, what's next there? What do you think in terms of that trend? Are we still going to see more and more focus on the small commercial? Is that something that we can take to the personal lines? Are we missing something there? That's that's really interesting. I, I think one thing, I don't know, <laughs> frankly. So, that, yeah. one, one it's thing an that, open question, right? It's not yeah, open. one thing that came up in conversations, uh, you know, reinsurance is particularly interested in the small commercial space because they don't get access to it. And, like, think about it this way. Um, Hartford, uh, the Travelers, Liberty, you know, Chubb, all the big legacy players who operate in the small commercial space, they take 100% of that risk. And they're like, they're good risks, right? Like this is exactly what you want from a reinsurance perspective because you know, small commercials run in loss ratios of you know, 40%, right? Like it's fantastic. And if you're just taking the risk on those from a reinsurance standpoint, you're not having to do the administrative hassle, you can make money hand over fist. Your background, so you've done several positions as an actuary. Mm -hmm. Your recent, before Coterie, you were with Clear Cover. That's right. Why, you know, I can understand someone who leaves a company, a big company, a, a big career, and start the startups. What made you jump from Clear Cover, which I would say doing a good job from what we see from the outside? into building your own thing. And there you were like the actual, right? The head actual. Yeah. And now yep. it's it, you're um, a founder of a technology company. Well, a career layer technology company. Yeah, it's, it's funny. To my wife's chagrin, uh, every single job that I've gone to subsequently, I've actually made less money at. I, to me, it's never been... I don't want to say it's never been about money, but like, I just really like the idea of something challenging and new that's going to just totally take me outside of my comfort zone and, and push me to a different level. And uh, yeah, so I started off with a company, a fantastic company called NCCI, and that went really, really well. And then uh, I was able to get into actuarial consulting and just like got thrown into the deep end, all kinds of crazy stuff associated with that. And then I had an opportunity to, to build out some cool stuff at a jewelry insurance company called Jewelers Mutual up in Wisconsin. And then when Kyle and I talked about the idea of clear cover and getting that off the ground, that was, that was really intriguing and everything was going extremely well at uh, Jewelers Mutual, but you know, wanted to, wanted to try something new, right. And do something that was, that was totally unique. And then clear cover again, 
story that turns into a rocket ship. And you know, I, I, more than a few people when I was starting Coterie were like, "Are are, are you are you sure about this?" <laughs> and thankfully, uh, thankfully it went well. But I still, I you know, it was a it it has been an amazing learning experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, being able to create something create an amazing team, a product that's actually going to do something different and meaningful in the insurance space and help push it forward uh, it has been has been fantastic. And I, I definitely didn't leave any of those companies because I didn't uh, like those companies because I didn't believe in those companies. All those companies are, are fantastic companies who I've had the opportunity to work for and just lots of fantastic people. And I still keep in touch with the folks at ClearCover. Uh, but I, I'm just, I really like, I like a good challenge. I think that's one of the reasons I, I love what what I'm doing now is like how fast an organization grows in the startup space, you are constantly having to learn new things. Like you cannot just say, Oh, figured that out. Now, now, now I'm just going to coast the rest of the time. Like it, it's, it's totally different. Like the inflection points of a startup and the different challenges. Like once you, you know, there's the, the pivoting through product market fit. Then once you figure out product market fit, then it's like, okay, well, let's create these systems and mechanisms so that we can run it through. And, so you can scale it. And, and then even beyond that, there, there's the scaling phase has different inflection points to it. And just like just like trying to decrease entropy as you scale and con contain these types of things, uh, it, totally different challenges as as the startup grows. So I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunity. How do you find your company now that you're in a let's call it the maturity stage of an A plus series. Well, basically you raised A, then you raised something that is almost another A. H how did it change? You know, we we're talking about that acceleration, that, that insane growth. Yeah. Now it's, it's definitely more focused. It, it, it's veritably not focused on product market fit. It's like, we figured that out and like the top of the funnel is really healthy. Right. Like we're able to, you know, get these partnerships and all that. And it's like we're now transitioning from people who were, you know, core focus on making making various things work, testing and all that kind of stuff. Now it's like, OK, we figured this out. Let's actually just cr now create the mechanisms and processes so that we can we can do it really well. Like we can we can make this go from here, the the raw material to revenue over here. And then once we do that, then it's going to be tending to that mechanism, tending to that process, reducing entropy in that process, or so reducing chaos, basically, so that we can focus as much energy on, as possible on, one, creating the revenue, and two, expanding into other areas where we can grow revenue. Uh, so that that's where we are right now, what we're focused on. Um, and that's what we'll be focused on for a little while until we hit another inflection point. You have the leadership team and you're adding more and more people and it's it's a great indicator of growth. How do you integrate new people to an insurtech startup? Right? How is the competition with is there a competition with carriers or are you competing with other startups for the talent? How does it work for you? It's a good question. We we, we compete with carriers for talent uh, and other startups. And we, I think the main thing that attracts people to Coterie is just like what we hire on and what you see throughout the company. We, we hire on five things. Uh, the first thing is we have a need and you have to have a superpower to meet that need, right? So that, that's another way to say it. It's like we hire on the presence of strength, not the absence of weakness. And it's funny because sometimes, you know, people will be like, oh, yeah, this person's really, he's, he's just amazing at this, but he's not as good at this. I'm like, great. That's why we hired that person. <laughs> like, the, the fact that this person will absolutely crush this thing, but may not be as good at that thing. That's okay. We love that. Uh, and the other four things are core values. Uh, it's integrity, intelligence, humility, and passion. And the one sentence way we describe it is we're, we're smart, energetic people who do the right thing, and we're not going to brag about it. And when you have that, when you have like really, really smart people who are just super high energy and they're smart enough and humble enough to fight against their own biases 
and just, you know they're they're willing to entertain two conflicting ideas at the same time that that's special right that's like true intelligence i have i have someone who you know you know justin Sutmiller. yeah and he he's just like a perfect right. example yeah. Yeah, of intelligence and humility combined. I have seen him say on multiple times, he will he will literally throw out an idea and then in the same sentence say how that idea is actually bad and go to a different idea. Like that's that's an intelligent person. That's someone who can think about two conflicting ideas, weigh them in his head, and in like five seconds be able to say, actually, I think this is the right way to go. I love that about him. Yeah, it's so funny. I remember that we used to have a uh, coffee outside of the farmer's uh, uh, area and talk about all kinds of different ideas. He was looking to do something. He wasn't sure. Then he moved back to the Midwest and he, he was doing all kinds of weird things. One of them was, can we share? What was it? It was this mobile application for sharing experience in in live shows. I was like, no, man, that's no, no. Stick to insurance. You're great. You're you're a super smart person. You know insurance, and that's an advantage. And you have a drive. That's an advantage that you don't see on a daily basis. There are there are people that, and this is why we see the insurtech revolution. But there aren't enough, especially with his knowledge and experience in the commercial insurance. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. I I think there's. There are some people in the insurance space who are just so hungry to do something meaningful. And I don't want to say that they're not doing something meaningful in the legacy carriers, but it's it's just difficult to get to the right places within the legacy carriers to do something that's fairly innovative or unique. You And for, for good reason. They have these massive ships that they need to continue on and like they need people to manage certain things. But if you want to do something fairly innovative, it can be very difficult to get out of the area you're in and into a different area. And a good remedy for that is to join a startup. And like, it, I think one of the, uh, the the gravity of Coterie, at least one thing that I think we do pretty well, is just the people we have. We're pretty we're pretty energetic and <laughs> ready to do do new stuff. And so that that pulls a lot of good people uh, from from some carriers. Um. Last question, and this is more to the personal, and it's the same question that I ask everyone that comes on the show, which is, can you give us a recommendation of a life hack or a great book or a TV show? Something that you've seen during the past year of lockdown, which is surprising now, it's like a little bit over, the, over a year, a week over a year. The the biggest life hack, read, 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 has, reading has a compounding effect. And the more, the older I get, the more that I value the benefits of reading, like audible, whatever it is, like read lots of stuff and spend time reading because your knowledge base just continues to increase and compound on itself. Like interest, you know, the compounding interest, is the most powerful force in the universe, like with reading, you get that in terms of knowledge. So I, I mean the the i wish i would have started reading m more at a younger age uh, i'm very thankful for actuarial science and all the the hours that i put in studying but honestly like <laughs> if i could do it over again i would switch all of those hours out for just reading and i, I think the the effects would be uh, extremely beneficial so from all the reading or listening to audiobooks that you have done recently is there one book, it can be fiction, it can be self-improvement, business, whatever that may be, that you can recommend people? Oh, man. The, I, I, I really like Principles by Ray Dalio. That, that, for, for nonfiction, that one is excellent. Uh, so Ray Dalio is really good. He's very thoughtful. And he's another example of someone who's read a ton. Uh, Charlie Munger, um, uh, Poor Charlie's Almanac, is a fantastic book. It's hard to find, but it's just a fantastic book that has all kinds of folksy wisdom from Charlie Munger, who is Warren Buffett's business partner. Uh, other, there, Shane Parrish and what he has on mental models is really good. Uh, Influence uh, by Dr. Cialdini is excellent. Uh, the Weapons of Influence. You read that book and it's just like someone taking 
taking the veil off of all the all the things that marketers use and, and businesses use to to draw you in. I mean, it's that that one is powerful. Influenced by Dr. Cialdini. Um, and, and this then, is a great example. By the way, this is a great example of intelligence and uh, humility, or being humble, because I ask for one, you already already gave me four, which is you know this is set expectation and over deliver. <laughs> I, I won't go on my uh, my fiction list. That that one that one goes on. David, thank you very very much for joining me today. It has been a pleasure, a eye opening, and of course, I think that one of the more interesting part it has enough details to keep people going. Like, okay, this is how startups, careers, and startups with startups actually can work together. Uh, well, thanks for having me on. It was it was absolutely a pleasure.